Hello everyone. My name is Keith Knutson and I would like to thank the members of the American Anthropological Association, specifically President Leith Mullings for welcoming me to present my research findings on the transgender community and the phenomena that occurs inside its cultural walls. People pertaining to the transgender culture are called many things due to the fact that there is no one group inside this community. Actually, the transgender community is a section of the LGBT community, or lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. Transgender is just a term that describes those whose gender identity is different from their actual gender. That being said, those who are lesbians, gay, or bisexual can be a member of the transgender community. Most of those in the LGBT community practice similar rituals and display similar characteristics to each other as well. In ancient times, those who were regarded as bridged in their gender identity or those who showed physical and or mental aspects of both men and women were thought to possess wisdom that traditionally gendered people deny and were valued because of it. The Native Americans also revered their transgenders, addressing them as two-spirited and were practically worshipped among his tribes and were often keepers of peace between the surrounding tribes. Actually, it wasn't until the 1900s that being a transgender person was something of discrimination. Before, transgender peoples were viewed as equals and were sometimes even viewed as being even more privileged and wise. When the transgender peoples were pushed into the underground nightlife of cities in the early 1900s, it began to build its character and evolve into what we know as today. Underground drag shows were performed in the back rooms of sketchy and questionable buildings in big cities, and the transgender people were forced to conceal their gender identity in order to avoid the discrimination. People could actually lose their jobs or be beaten if discovered gay or transgendered. However, the discrimination started to lift and the transgender community was being recognized in pop culture, and the transgender community boomed in popularity with releases such as the musical horror comedy, The Rocky Horror Picture Show. As the transgender community became more widespread with acceptance and enjoyment, many transgender clubs began to expose themselves to common nightlife and become the obscure nightlife we see today. The transgender community is often exposed at night, and many of the rituals that they practice take place during this time. I have concluded through my research that the most popular nighttime activity for transgenders are the gay nightclubs that can be found in nearly every city in the United States. Every night of the week, hundreds of members of the transgender community flock to these locations in order to revel and lose themselves in the music, dancing, and shows of the club. I have researched the nightlife for a few months now, which is plenty of time to familiarize myself with the actions and activities that go on in these gay nightclubs. Although the nightclubs are typically full of music and the dancing, a more culturally specific ritual catches the eyes of all who walk through the doors. One of the more prominent rituals are the drag shows. For these shows, grown men paint themselves up with makeup and throw on dresses and wigs in order to imitate the woman form and show themselves on the catwalk for the enjoyment of others. Here I have a video of how a drag queen prepares for her show. Because tonight I'm a naked drag queen. Play with me. I love you guys.
For the benefit of your organization and the research of others, I conducted a few interviews about drag culture and how people get involved with it. Here is drag queen Patricia Clare with her story. My story started in 2002 when I went to a gay club in Miami with a few friends. I didn't really want to go. I mean, I had little interest in the drag shows that I know went on, and I wasn't in the mood to worry about getting hit on by a few other guys. A few hours and more than a few drinks later, the drag show started. Ooh yeah. I didn't remember much of that night and the next morning, but the pictures sure as hell refresh my memory. They had a special that allowed nightclub goers to rent out the drag queen dressing room and compete in an amateur drag show. I was reluctant at first, but alcohol got the best of me and my friends convinced me to do it. Long story short, I won, and it was the most exhilarating moments of my life. After that night, I found myself shopping for new clothes so I could continue doing the shows I love so much. I made it both a hobby and a job. Over the course of my research grant period, I consistently visited one of the local transgender nightclubs called Pulse. Pulse was an interesting place, the menagerie of both decorations and the people that attended. The first night I was there, I was greeted by a drag show featuring a contestant on RuPaul's Drag Race. I was able to see the community excited as a whole and how all of the attention in the club directed towards the catwalk. It was what everyone else has come here for. The more I researched the community, the more accustomed to the environment and the more people I met. It's amazing how this community unites people from all over the world. Two of the people I met were from Brazil and had come here to experience the drag shows in America for themselves. The entirety of the community I witnessed was open and welcoming to anyone that entered, gay, lesbian, transgendered, or not.